Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. So I did reload the save before we went through that wall. I rested and now we're here. You've just begun to stretch and soothe the aches from your body when you feel all of over your shoulder. He looks away quickly when you notice him, kneading his hands into squirming fists. I'm sorry, Evna, I didn't mean to sneak up on you. I just well, you mean you seem preoccupied. What's on your mind? I suppose I've just noticed you acting a little uh, unusual lately. Talking to people who aren't there, remembering flashbacks of your previous life. I, I just want to make sure you're doing all right. He stares at a spot on the ground. Yes, I, I am. Ah, well, good. I should let you rest. It looks like we'll have another full day tomorrow. I might be going crazy after all. Hmm. So we don't know there's a room and honestly. Oh, not again. In front of you looms the ghostly hollow image of the man who was present at your awakening. He casts a pale, sickly light in the dark corridor as he regards you. You are from, from Kratum, my dear. His words are an echo in your mind from a time long past, and you know your response before you speak it, as if it has always been. Yes, I was born there. A remarkable city, truly one of the most impressive we have encountered outside of our own. Many exceptional people who have joined our cause come from Kratum. What made you decide to join our order? I went through dark times. Nothing made sense. That all changed when your order came to my homeland. Little makes sense in the false context much of the world has lived under for so long. It is by the mercy of the gods that our faith has been able to reach so many of the heathen in more recent times. Are you ready to take the oath to spread the word of the gods to the lost and heathen? I am. I am I had fast mode enabled and apparently I pressed wrong button when I was unmuting my microphone. Okay, and sorry about that. I was being my glasses. <laughs> oh, I've been all over the place lately. Not a sound. Another fake wall. Hmm. So many of those here. And I can see this is a fake what is that? And we have timed quest as well. The mercenary eyes you warily as you approach, his weapon ready. What are you doing here? You don't look like one of the masked lot. <laughs> Relax, how would I know to be here if I didn't belong? He thinks carefully, then nods. Alright then, go on in and report to the acolyte and she will give you the, your assignment. They should be just about finished with their meeting in the big chamber. Farewell. Best not to ask anything. And I wanted to check out this timed quest. Uh, this one? No. No. This? No. no. God damn it. Diamond tight. That sounds like it. Mm. No. I thought it would be this one, but no. Visions. Oh, great. Not really anything, not really anything useful. By the way, can someone put on the mask so we don't look so weird? I sold it? I don't have it? Where is it? Um... God damn it, he must be at camp. Hello? Hello? 
Hi, you. How are you doing? Oh, nice. Al falters and brings a hand to his forehead. He takes a staggering step forward, coughing and sputtering. Back, you Claude! Those hooded fiends are not to be trusted! Elf, pull yourself together! He grimaces, cutting his breath. It's nothing, I'm fine. <clears throat> this probably isn't the best place to linger, anyhow. And he worries about us. How sweet of him. You hear murmurs and chants on the other side of the door. A ritual of some sort is already on the way. Don the hooded mask. You pull the hooded mask over your head. They fit, but just barely. Beck on your party to follow you into the chamber. You open the door and stride into the chamber, motioning for the rest of your party to accompany you. I hope they also wear those masks. Several shrouded figures are lined up across from a hooded woman. The figure at the head of the line approaches her, and the woman places her outstretched hand on the stranger's forehead. They stand in silent communion as you look on. A few moments later, the stranger steps aside and resumes his place in the circle around the statue. The hooded woman looks past you to your party. The other figures do the same, muttering am among themselves. The woman points a long finger at you. Stop them! Damn it. That's why I said I hope that they also have those masks on them. Oh, don't you dare. Where is your fireball? I swear, do it here. Now do this. You all can attack. I mean, the four of you can attack him. I don't like where it's going. They're both barely hit. Oh, okay, it also hits us, now I know. Wait, I must move away. <sighs> you please do not this, do this. Crumpled at your feet lies the body of a woman. She wears a dark robe that bears an insignia resembling a key. As you approach the woman's body, feelings of rage assault you. The dead woman's voice howls in your ears, and her lingering consciousness rends at yours. The essence tingles through your bones and membranes. It fills the space between your ears and behind your eyes, glowing deeper into your core. You see a gathering of men and women wearing robes like hers, their faces hidden behind masks. One by one they approach her, whom they know as an acolyte, and she places her hand on each of their foreheads, searching their thoughts. She tests them with ritualistic questions, and they answer that their oath is sealed by the leaden key. She asks them of their tasks, she gives them new ones, all without a word. Try to see the tasks. Her essence flares, fighting to boil your blood, burn your memory and splinter your bones from within. Yet between its strikes you see flashes of something else. A tower, a prisoner, and a ruin. You funnel all of your concentration into a single effort of will, a sharp point that pins the raging soul in place like an insect in a display case. With the thing under control, you are able to examine it and the free thoughts swirling inside. 
examining the fort about the tower. You see a pine vest of a neighborhood, run down estates and are cobbled around a cemetery and an ancient tower. Savage shapes prowl the streets and in the tower a man hunches over a strange mechanism. You can't see him clearly, but there's something unnatural about him. Somewhere nearby, you see a woman with a scar over her heart. You understand that she has something she, he needs. You also see a door in the base of the tower and a seemingly impenetrable slab of stone and copper. But then the acolyte reveals the invisible split between the perfectly matched halves. And you understand how the copper veins convert a command into action. You know how to open the door. Inquire about the prisoner. In your mind you see a building, magnificent with trellises and tiles and located on a pristine boulevard. The wealthy and learned stroll in and out, trading knowledge and coin. Yet it also houses misery and madness. Somewhere within its rotten course is a man, his hair matted but his eyes alert. He watches and waits, a prisoner by choice. Look into the ruins. The acolyte's vision takes you out of the Fines Bay and to a town in the wilderness with a water mill, a signpost on one of the paths reads Deerford. Several figures huddled together, shrouded in cloaks and hoods. An image of ruins suddenly looms in your mind. Two skeletal effigies flung a cleft in the mountainside. Look away. Uh, oh, nice. Ooh, that's for you. Another grimoire. I swear, if any of those are timed, I will... Oh, another secret wall. Secret gate. Torque of the Fions. Whether by design or by consequence of the sputtering candlelight, the hooded statue's face is almost impossible to see. Now the question, will everyone now be hostile towards us? Devotees have placed assorted keys, their teeth piled away among their runnels of wax. wax. Because I would like to see the rest of this place. Of course, they will, now they will be aggressive against us, hostile towards us, more like. Uh, you do your thing, please. You do this. Um. I just really like this spell, you know? Where are you? Oh, he's on the ground right now. Great. Now that's dealt with. Yeah, I put it all into stash. But now I must be more careful. Maybe we should not go in there after all. Think. 
There's a grimoire that we took. And now we have it in our stash. Oh! Oh! So that's the weirdy thing. The visit. No, 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 the two of you. Oh, he's dead. Just novice is growing more. It's probably the same for each novice. Here we can you. I need to make to heal your endurance if I want to heal your. Sorry, if I want to heal your health. I adore that we are simply knocking them out. We're not killing them, no. Hmm. Dear sister. Oh, we've been for that. Yep. A book lies on the table. Its page is filled with some kind of unintelligible cryptography. Listen, if I get a chance to raid a temple of some vengeful <laughs> goddess, then why shouldn't I, right? Okay, mm -mm. what do we have here? Uh, the Morning Circle. A secret society of animals has been traveling around the Eastern Reach, promising to restore life to lost loved ones. They perform their rituals at clandestine meetings in various cities, never staying in one place for more than a few days. Though some spark of life appears to be restored to the bodies they revive, authorities suspect that the group is behind abductions, murders, vivish actions, and other ghastly practices that appear to be acquired by their methods. To make matters worse, those restored to life rapidly decompose or go mouth within days of the resurrection. Concerned animators and various civic authorities are seeking help in tracking down those responsible. Hmm, a sign. No companions and stronghold, of course. Um, finished in, one, in 14 hours. Yeah, hopefully, we'll still have some time with that. Ah, oh, this is so annoying. Light, flame, and sound. Hopefully, once I have more mechanics, it will be easier to detect those. The steward of Kaden has received a letter for you. A moment, please. I feel I should explain myself. Go on. About my episode in the catacombs. There's something I should have told you earlier. So tell me now. He clasps his hands together, slowly massaging the knuckle with his thumb. I mean no harm. I thought I could keep it to myself. That when we resolve the matter of your soul, we would also address my problem. I also have an awakened soul. But unlike yours, mine is a presence that shares my senses and my skin, making herself manifest at the most unwelcome times. He closes his eyes and grits his teeth. His lips quiver and twitch with the vestiges of some internal debate. Several seconds later, he opens his eyes again. They are watery and bloodshot. I'm sorry. I tried to learn to control Isselmir. I've gotten stronger, but so has she. Tell me about Isselmir. Artless, uncouth, a creature of rash impulses and feeble faculties. She wags her impertinent tongue when she should listen. Hey, this one's fit to boil. Hard to get this gaff over anything tisn't to do with books and spill speak. He grimaces, running his hand through his hair. I have none of her memories. Beroth spared me that much, but her coarse manners and 
incurable hell speaks of just a provincial from a very, very long time ago. She danced to service a hair's breadth from conflict. When the fuse has burned down and give her own edge. And when she grow, shows up, she doesn't stop to go a situation. She just acts. Well, she does seem reckless. That's exactly it. You recall the way she goaded those villagers in Blood of the Day. She doesn't think and she doesn't back down. And trying to suppress that has been my problem for years. Why didn't you say something sooner? I learned to keep her a secret a very long time ago. Those with awakened souls are shunned, mistrusted. And after your experience with Meowald, I'm certain you can see why. You need to be careful. Is it going to be a problem? Merely an annoyance. Although... He lowers his voice and clasps his hands behind his back. Mine twitches and spasm along his arms betray his fidgeting. Defiance Bay is said to have an entire institution dedicated to the study and cure of soul-related ailments. Since our journeys have already brought us to the city, perhaps we could speak with someone there. If it's helpful to you, we'll go. Thank you. This has been a great burden. Okay, but let's talk about something else. Maybe you have something interesting. I would like to know more about Iselmer. Such as? When did she awaken? My father was a strict man. He expected the best from his only child and he didn't tolerate failure. His face becomes drawn. At times he could be rather adamant. Particularly when he had been drinking. Islamer manifested on one such occasion. To be honest, I don't remember the specifics, only that he was more careful with me after that. You said to you that you'd learned to hide her a long time ago. My mother instructed me to keep her a secret after she first emerged. She feared that knowledge of my awakening would render me an outcast. Even though Isilmer proved useful against my father, I trust my mother's advice and I've since come to see the wisdom behind it. Male Ward is an extreme example, but one that I can relate to more and more each year. Could I talk directly to her? He gives you a towel to frown. Her usurpations are uncomfortable enough. I am not eager to invite her into my consciousness more than necessary. Fine. Let's discuss something else. Indeed. Uh, yeah, actually also. Um, okay, now we are out. We finally made it. Go. Hello? A ghost... To pay your respects to the queen that was. A ghost hovers in the middle of the ruin reciting blessings and prayers. Even as the spirit's form shifts and swirls, it retains the face of an elderly man and robes that mark wealth and status. It turns to you. Who are you? Lord Ardwellen Rugfold the Third, and pleased to make your acquaintance. I came to the Deerwood on one of the first ships from Adia. And unlike the yokels and hut dwellers around here, I still keep to the old ways. It's truly a pity to see what the locals have done to Woodica's house of worship. What are you doing? Worshipping Woodica, the exiled queen and oathbinder. I come every day to offer my devotion. I'd love nothing more than to book passage back to Adia, but it is my Emperor's wish that I serve in these barbaric lands. And so I do. I would like to know more about Wardika. A queen among the gods. She oversees laws and oaths. Everything has a rightful place, and Woodaka watches over them all. Of course, not everyone accepts this. Even among the other gods, her authority is questioned. 
But Rudika is also goddess of memory and vengeance. And she remembers. She'll remember every slight and trespass when she reclaims her throne. You know that you're a ghost, right? I beg your pardon? Is this some sort of joke where you come from? I'm serious. Just look at yourself. A madhouse. That's what this town really needs. Okay, fine. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. But with this, I think I'll end this part here. We actually made it where? First fires. Oh. So, for now, thank you very much. <laughs> Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.